Hey there, this is Ann Westerheim from Ikaru, and I'm just checking my screen sharing to make sure that it is working. And I'll be getting a sound check from Nancy, so um, we will get started in just a moment. Okay, and there we go. So thanks everybody for joining us. Um, we place a big emphasis on cybersecurity, and uh, one of the messages that we really want to get a, a across as part of our mission is that cybersecurity really needs to be a part of the culture of every company. And in this day and age, it's so important to make sure that everyone on your team is up to speed. Uh, so today's topic is, can you spot a phishing email? Uh, for those of us, for those of you who are new to us, um, Ikara, we've been around for 15 years. We've been doing our, we've been on a mission to support small businesses in the area for the last 15 plus years, everything from help desk to CIO level strategy and security, cybersecurity has always been a really important part of our service delivery. So in, in this day and age, um, basically everybody, you need to have a business class firewall in place, antivirus, security patch updates, and more and more people are getting that message and the bad actors have figured that out. So they just come up with clever new ways of getting attacks into a network and it turns out that email something that we use every single day is winding up being the number one attack vector oops and i am having trouble moving the slide so the stats are i'm just trying to get something off my screen here um, Verizon just did a 2019 breach investigations report, and they find, found in, in their survey that 94% of detected malware is coming through email. So it's the vast majority of malware is getting on the business network through email. Small businesses account for about a half of all breaches that are occurring. And a lot of times, you know, we talk to a lot of different businesses, and folks will say, you see the headlines, Target, Home Depot, Yahoo, Facebook, all these big companies, and they think they're safe, but small businesses, just, it's just not as newsworthy, but about half of breaches are affecting small businesses. And that email attacks are hitting about 85% of U.S. companies. So this is, this is really widespread. Okay, and I'm waiting for the screen to progress. A little bit of a technical difficulty here. Sorry about that. The screen is not moving forward for me. All right, when you get emails and texts, um, sorry about that. I'm half, something is blocking my screen. It's tough for me to see it. I uh, would go to webinar. But anyway, when you get emails, texts, or phone calls that are from, they appear to be from people you know. Um, they're actually from scammers, and that's what phishing is. And they're trying to get you to click on a link, open a file, or provide information so they can steal money, your identity. And typically, there's a sense of urgency. They want you to act now. And it, it can be anything from acquiring sensitive information. They want usernames, password, credit card details. They typically can masquerade, and we're going to show in this presentation, it's very easy for folks to masquerade as somebody else. Um, emails claiming to be from popular websites, so they're going after the most popular ones, and they try to be you know, either from those sites, from the IT administrators, and they're using um, social engineering to be able to get their threats through. So social engineering is basically... It's basically about tricking people. So um, these messages are very carefully crafted, and we're going to show a lot of examples in this presentation today. So they're carefully crafted to get you to click on that link, provide the information, just open the email, open the attachment. And we're going to be talking about cyber threats. And the thing to keep in mind that the threats are in cyberspace, but the victims are in the real world. And um, there's one of the very common scams is there's a lot of wire transfer scams. And people are actually losing their funds for, for home purchases. I, I talk to, I've talked to a lot of local real estate agents, local attorneys, local banks. And this is happening in the area. It's happening all over the country. But um, these are real losses. And in the 
case of a wire transfer, if you initiate it, you have almost no recourse. Unless it's caught almost immediately, the money's going to be completely gone. These are real victims. This is one of the biggest ones I've seen. This has um, happened to a, a, an excellent uh, company, Ubiquity Networks. Um, they actually lost $40 million. It came up in their annual report a couple of years back. So this is real money, um, and it's, it's affecting just about everybody. When I think about phishing, I, I remember the old uh, New Yorker cartoon on the Internet, no one knows you're a dog. Things are carefully presented to us. And we're sort of psychologically trained to believe what we see. And what we see on a computer is not necessarily what's really there. So here, here's uh, the first uh, fake message I'm going to show you. And um, as we go through this presentation, you see there's not a simple way to tell something's fake. Now, this one's from a couple years back, and, and they were a lot worse back then. So this is one that actually came to my own um, email inbox. It's from ADP Payroll, very widely used. And it says ACH notification. That's a common thing that comes through the finances of a business. And But it wasn't the exact right subject line for an ADP payroll um, message. The dates on the email don't match. Um, they talk about downloading a file from Dropbox. No one, no one in the financial community would be asking you to download a file from Dropbox. The, and then it doesn't, it's not even Dropbox. It's another, it's a competitor of Dropbox, Cubby Inc. But you got to look at all these little things. But if you're a, a busy professional and you're um, going through a lot of email, you get the ACH notification, you're sort of predetermined to kind of go click. This one happens to be super obvious. There's no signature. So slow down before clicking. And in this day and age, um, we're not so lucky anymore. The threats, uh, the bad actors realize there's a lot of money in cybercrime. There's more money in cybercrime than all other forms of organized crime put together. And here's one from Hotels.com. And in this one, um, the graphics look great. Um, it gives you a coupon code that looks real, book now. A lot of people are traveling. They're looking for deals. So you may never use Hotels.com, but a lot of people do. And these are just blanketed out millions of these messages, and somebody's going to click. So the little clue on this one is that um, if you look at where it's from, it says Hotels.com, but the fine print is a totally different address. So that's, um, that's a little clue to look for. Um, this is something I pulled from the Verizon website. Uh, it's a message from Verizon Wireless, and it says, update required. I would say when you see a lot of exclamation marks, that's one red flag right there. It says, dear user, it's not customized. And then it wants you to click because they're you know, unable to authorize your last payment, verify your email address below, and they want you to, you know, they want you to click on something. But you can imagine, maybe you're leaving for a trip, and um, you know, you don't want your cell phone accidentally shut off because a payment didn't go through right or something. So you you may click on something like this in a hurry. And the the um, the details are kind of subtle. Uh, this one, Justin, uh, ironically, this one appeared in my own mailbox this morning. And what this one is is it's saying that um, our we have an infoidcar.com mailbox where we have kind of general inquiries that come to us. It's a, it's a, a, it's a mailbox that goes to a number of people in the company. Now, I know I'm I'm the super administrator for the mail, so I know it didn't come from me. It says you have 11 pending messages. And so somebody who's diligently doing their job is like, oh, my gosh, I got to see 11 messages. I need to know what those are. I want to preview these emails right now to make sure I get them. And that's when they get you. Um, it's, it's again, you have something pending there. It's, it's information that you need that you can't get to or a payment that didn't go through, something with a sense of urgency. So these are, in the first couple of examples, um, things to think about. Um, I'm giving a list of things here, but as I'm going to show as I go through a lot more examples, it's just not that simple. So the first thing, like, do you have an account with that company? Hotels.com, you may or may not use it. Um, but with banks, you know, let's say somebody's um, going on an identity theft uh, <laughs> mission with your credentials, you know, maybe you see an account you don't recognize. So it's not that cut and dry because um, maybe the scam is that somebody's opened an account in your name, et cetera. Um, why the urgency? Yeah, um, that's something to ask yourself in any email that you get. Why the urgency? Because that's probably the most common trick that the scammers are using in the phishing emails. Um, unsolicited attachments, always watch out for those. 
misspelling, grammar mistakes. That very first one I sent to you was really badly worded, badly formatted. Um, this is becoming, the, the bad actors are just getting better at this. They're putting a little more effort into what they're throwing out there. Lack of customization, um, that's something to look for. That's not, that doesn't mean that the email, there's something wrong with the email, but it's just like a little red flag. Um, the logo might be a bit off, but that can be very, very hard to spot. I'm going to show later on, you can hover over a link to reveal what the real URL is. And then, you know, who's the email from? It may require header analysis. I'll show that. That's a little more tricky to do. Um, but it's the thing for everyone in your organization to know is that it's very easy for someone. They don't have to be a genius hacker to do this. They can say the email's from anybody, and then hidden in the header is where it's really from. And I don't mean the header that you can see. It's the header that's kind of under the hood that you have to look in the properties of an email to actually get. It says, like, every server that it went to. Uh, typo squatting, uh, a lot of terms that are really useful to know. It's also known as URL hijacking. That's when a site, um, like if you see below, Google with three O's versus two O's, that's kind of hard to spot on very small fonts, say on a laptop, you know, an extra O or maybe there's a zero instead of an O. Um, many of the big brands have folks, a lot of times they'll go buy all the nearby domains, but um, this is something um, that scammers often do. Um, around tax season, there's just a, a long list of scams that come around tax season or anything related to the IRS, uh, W-2s, uh, direct deposits. Um, but here's one, um, I, you know, I changed my bank and I, I want my direct deposit details changed. So it, you can see it's kind of, it, it's a quick message a little bit of a sense of urgency, kind of casual. They make it look kind of familiar. Um, a lot of these are falsely sent from, you know, sent from my iPhone. They're not even sent from an iPhone, but anybody could write that at the bottom of a message. And what that kind of clues in, in terms of that social engineering, the recipient's going to think, oh, they didn't give a lot of details because they're typing on a phone. And um, so I better, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to ask for more details because they're typing on a phone. Um, we had a... a client, a real case, um, somebody came to us where the reason they, they came very close to wiring money, and then they kind of remembered that their boss didn't have an iPhone. It's like, well, that's weird. Um, you know, so-and-so doesn't have an iPhone. They have a different type of phone. Um, but a lot of people, um, probably iPhone's the most common kind of phone. So you can see how they kind of work this into that. Um, this is one that's actually came to my own inbox. This was a while back. Again, that sense of urgency. Your mailbox is almost full. And then it looks so easy. If you just click on this link, you can make your problem go away. So, um, you know, that's a, a common trick. So if your mailbox is ever uh, filled up, you'll know that you can't receive new email and it's a big pain. So this just makes it look so easy. Just click on this link, add more storage to your mailbox, and everything's going to be fine. Um, except that's not what it is. Um, here's another example. And um, I hope by the end of this session, I'm going to show I'm going to show a lot of examples because there's not just one checklist that you can use to spot a fake email. It's really a combination of a lot of things. It's about slowing down, think before you click, um, watch out for certain types of things, but keep in mind that the bad actors are there's a lot of money involved and they're putting in the work to come up with new things that they might do. So um, this one's asking. Um, uh, they, they need a username and a password. Now, that's a giant red flag if anybody wants your password, but you know, they send out stuff like this because some people will. And this is saying, you know, your account's been compromised, and as a part of the security me measures, we're upgrading your system. You see there's a grammar mistake there with the capital W. Um, but, you know, again, giant red flag, username and password. Uh, here is an example from... Costco. And this one does have the brand, the uh, logo is off, but that would be very, very hard to spot. You know, they, they have the colors kind of right. It's a little bit off. Kind of the bigger flag is if you look, it says Costco shipping agent, and then it says in parentheses something else, cbcbuilding.com. I mean, it has a C in it. Um, you could see how somebody reading this quickly would maybe um, go through. It says a delivery has been canceled. Because the address, so this, you know, uh, and maybe you never shop at Costco, so this this one wouldn't get you, but a lot of people do, and they just blanket every different brand out there. 
et cetera. Um, here's another thing to watch out for. It's unsolicited attachments. So this is from, it's from the bank. Uh, it says you're sending you a bank slip for a new payment on your account. So this might look like, you know, like QuickBooks will notify you when funds are coming in. Um, but unsolicited attachments um, really uh, need to be looked at. And then you might, oh, funds, you know, what are these funds? The, the, the message below, curiosity killed the cat. Um, one question we get a lot, zip file is a legit file extension. Um, but it can also, it's often commonly used to hide other sorts of executables. So watch out for it. If you do things like um, download a lot of reports from a site, they will come through as zip. So it's a way of compressing files, totally legit, but it's often used to hide stuff. So something to watch out for. Um, this one is a fake example from Netflix. So update your payment details. And if you figure, you know, you're getting ready to watch uh, Stranger Things and now your account's messed up, uh, again, that sense of urgency, you want to jump on it right away. And it just says update account now. Again, it looks so easy. Like, hey, I don't want to have a problem with our, my, my account's on hold. I want to make this problem go away. There's a button right here. I can click on that right away. It does say, hi, dear. So that's kind of a red flag, but um, that would be hard to spot. And this one, the graphics, the graphics look good. And, um, you know, and, it, and it's kind of, uh, it's, you know, we'll try again. We're having some trouble. We'll try again. But it, it's, again, it's that temptation. I can just make my problem go away if I just click on that button. Um, here's another fake from uh, Wells Fargo. Um, this is a bank. This one has a number of errors on it. Again, um, under the subject where the giant number two is, exclamation marks. You see a lot of exclamation marks. Most businesses don't use a lot of them, so alerts with two of them front, that, that's, that's a flag. Um, you'll see it says Wells Fargo support online, but the actual URL is a Comcast address. Uh, Wells Fargo is not going to use a Comcast address. Uh, a grammatical error in, in, you know, we're sorry, and then the capital F. Um, that's probably because a lot of these are written from people overseas, maybe commonly make that grammatical error. And then, um, you know, this domain at the bottom, if you hover over it, I'm going to show examples later, it, it doesn't go. Anybody can type any URL into the body of an email, and they can code it to go somewhere else. It's very trivial to do. And um, But if, if, if even one person in your company doesn't know that, they're going to click on that, you know, they would potentially click on that link. And that's why we're so big on security awareness training. We want to get everybody on your team. It's not enough for a few people to know stuff like this. Everyone on your team needs to know it. It takes one click to do a lot of damage. Um, here's another one uh, from, it's a fake invoice from Apple um, sent around Christmas time. So again, a lot of a lot of holiday scams. So this is um, a receipt. So you might think, oh, gosh, did somebody swipe my credit card? They went to an Apple store. What did they buy? And, and you want to open that really quickly. And this is a fake, and this, is, this one's going to put some malware on the system. Or um, you know, it's unclear in, in each case which one they're going after, um, but it's going to do a lot of harm. And you can see the U where it's from it says apple store app store and then it says secure something apple.com so for somebody who doesn't understand what urls are they may say well I, it says apple but it's just something else plus apple so it, it's not going to the same place so again unsolicited attachment uh the from address is not uh it's a different domain and uh, you know again around christmas be be on high alert for all kinds of scams. It takes just one email, click, think before you click. And um, I have three engineering degrees. Um, I'm a member of FBI InfraGuard, so I, I read about cybersecurity every single day. But this is one I almost clipped on. I couldn't find the um, original email, but um, I'd been in New York City at Toys R Us. I took a taxi ride, and I got in the taxi, and when I was going to pay, taxi driver said, oh, the card scanner's not working. Use this other one. And I was just in a rush. And Norma, that's kind of a red flag. And uh, then it turns out somewhere, like a couple of days later, I got a fraud alert email from American Express that somebody bought like a ton of stuff at Toys R Us. And I was 
because this had randomly happened to me, I was in New York and in this taxi, I was ready to click on that link, but I knew better I didn't. And I, I called the number on the back of my credit card, and it turned it was just a fraudulent message, and but very well timed. And uh, you can you can see how this social engineering really kicks in. And no matter how educated you are about this, you you run the risk of clicking on one of these. How do the threats get through? It's social engineering. They, the um, tactics continue to evolve. Um, one of the things a lot of the security researchers, now that a lot of the processing is done in the cloud, they're applying big data techniques to analyze this. Brand impersonation, so that's the fake Wells Fargo, the fake Apple, the fake Hotels.com, that tends to be the highest prevalence. But there's also blackmail emails and the business email compromise. That's the one where it looks like you're getting an email from your boss or from your closing attorney for a real estate transaction about a wire transfer and a change in account number, and it's a fake. Um, brand impersonation is number one. Um, this is one of the techniques. This is um, a slight misselling. Instead of C-O-R-P, it's C-O-N-P. Very hard to spot on a screen. But again, again, it's this uh, familiarity. Are you in the office? Need you to bank? Need you to do this for me? Give me a quick reply when you get it done. When you can get it done. And people. It, your good employees want to uh, please the boss, want to get stuff done efficiently. They're, they're going to act quickly. So watch out for any pressure, even if it's applied in a subtle way like this one. Um, here's some of the most common lines um, for the business email compromise email request. Um, they're just trying to establish a familiarity, a sense of urgency, and kind of imply that you've talked about it before, because chances are, I mean, if you're in a position where you do wire transfers, you probably do them on a you know somewhat regular basis. Hey, are you available? Are you at your desk? Follow up, um, et cetera. Brand impersonation. Um, they're, they're trying to impersonate something from a trusted identity. This one is a fake from Microsoft. And you can go through and and um, these are, when we run phishing tests for the, our clients who ask them, Microsoft ones are clicked on a lot. Um, but, you know, they're one of the most widely known brands. Um, they can do domain spoofing or some of them are just very, um, very basic. But again, if one employee in your company doesn't know that you can, they can say Microsoft, and it could be from anybody. Uh, they run the risk of clicking on this, and and here you can see the breakdown in some of this reporting. Again, this is from the Barracuda report. Microsoft is the number one uh, brand that's Im impersonated in, in tricks like this. Apple, DocuSign, Chase, etc. It goes down the list. Amazon, um, that one's emerging and growing. That's how you see American Express. That's that's the one that I had received. Blackmail emails, we sent out a couple of warnings to our clients on this. Um, they can actually get, I'll explain this in a little bit, but um, because stuff gets out on the dark web, it's possible that your passwords are, are actually, it's not just possible, it's highly likely that your pa some of your passwords are out there. And um, they can just put this together like in a mail merge, hey, I know this is your password, and maybe it's not your current password, but you recognize it, you know you've used it for something, it looks really real, and, and this is really growing. Um, could be, uh, and some of them involve porn, or your account's been hacked, it's being used by somebody else, you're my victim, um, this one, uh, change your password ASAP. You know, as you may have noticed, I sent this email from your email account, and it looks like it's from you and to you, except they're using that trick where they can it could be from anybody and they can say it's from you. And, and then it goes on, and some of them ask for Bitcoin at the end. Um, but um, I've heard of people in the community going to the police, and we actually notified our local police department when we saw this threat emerging just so um, they wouldn't give bad information to users, but this one individual, unfortunately, in, in this person's town, the police weren't aware of this, and they treat, you know, they, this person was completely freaked out thinking that it was an actual real threat, and it wasn't. It's just these are mass-marketed uh, blanket threats. Um, this is an example. Um, this is from Krebs, uh, Krebs on Security, which is a really great uh, security blog online, but there, there's marketplaces online, and this is from 
in the dark web. They just buy and sell. Um, hey, I want to get credentials for Target.com. Um, there's 44 in stock, and they're $10 each. People can just buy and sell this stuff. If you've ever, you everybody's had the situation where your credit card, you get a notification, there's been a breach, you get a new credit card. Well, all that stuff is out there, and it's being bought and sold all the time. This is an example from the um, from the dark web of it's it's not genius hackers. People just buy tools. They they don't even know have have to know how to program to do this stuff. They buy tools to just blast out this stuff to everybody, and and they need it doesn't cost them anything to send it, and they just need a few clicks. Um, if they get ransomware on somewhere, they can make a lot of money. Um, Pretexting, that's that's what the terminology is of when somebody knows something about you. They're going to take something they know about you because it's been out on the dark web or whatever it is and combine it to make the threat look a lot more real. Um, in, in terms of passwords, a lot of people use the same password for multiple things. So let's say LinkedIn gets breached and all those passwords are out there. and they've been, They get breached there like every second year. Yahoo, if you've ever had a Yahoo account, every single Yahoo credential ever has been breached. It's been published out there. And if you use that password somewhere else, these folks will opportunistically just start. It's called credential stuffing. They'll just try it everywhere. They'll try it with different banks and different places because if you use it somewhere else, they're going to find it. And these are automated tools. Nobody's sitting there you know, working all night long trying to do this manually. It's all automated. Um, that's why we're really big on password hygiene, different passwords. Uh, we recommend using a password manager for this, but that's that's why. And we just we want people to just be aware that there's all these different things. I think with awareness comes that just that little pause moment where you're not just going to click on something. I'm trying to get through a lot of material. Um, we will definitely be done um, before one o'clock, but I'm, I'm going to go through as much as I can because there's so many different types here with baiting means um, in, in the in the scam they're trying to trick you into getting something it might be q1 layoff plan it might be um, the payroll report and imagine one of your employees gets a payroll report in their inbox and thinking wow I got this by mistake no one knows I have it I'm gonna open it um, that's that's how folks will get you um, spear phishing another term worth noting that's targeted Phishing and it's very easy to you know scrape uh, names off of websites, just pulling them off of LinkedIn. Try to figure out who's who and maybe look at look out for some more high value targets. And that's a more targeted. Um, they put a little more work into it because they think they're going to get a little more payback on it. It's it's like a step up from like the blanket threats that are being sent out there. And then be aware of how much information you share online. Um, and this is a really big issue in the real estate between the closing attorney, maybe the enthusiastic home buyer, and um, you know maybe they're recommending, oh, this is the, the real estate agent we use. They were so great. All of that is out there, and somebody can triangulate on that. It's happening locally. Um, Tip-offs um, for uh, and for this. Um, Again, watch out for opening attachments. Um, if there's a problem on your account, fake invoices. I had a client just show me they actually got one in paper mail, a fake invoice in paper mail. So folks are going old school. A lot of this is online because they don't have to pay for postage. Um, any coupons, just things that are going to be enticing for folks. Um, kind of recapping on a lot of folks, things we talked about, design flaws, the grammar. Again, very tough to spot when you're reading stuff quickly. Um, incorrect URLs, a sense of urgency, unexpected requests, just like, you know, why are they asking for this now? That's the kind of thing you want to pause and think about. Um, communication gaps, the deceptive links. These are examples of spoofed email, spoofed, you know, it's a fake email, um, scans from a Xerox, missed package delivery. Um, we know somebody in the community who fell for that one, the boss got it. Forward, hey, I don't have time for this, forwarded to an assistant. The assistant in that case had received it from an authority, a known authority, the boss, and then went and acted on it and clicked on it. Again, that kind of brings to everyone in your organization needs to be aware of what these different tricks are. The ACH notification, that one we showed, voice messages. Um, you know, a, a lot of people with the VoIP phones are getting voice messages through email, like we do in our company. Got to just watch for one that's worded a little different. Uh, fax messages, 
Uh, Dun & Bradstreet case numbers, we've seen folks fall for this one, full-blown ransomware attack from this. Uh, an employee spent hours evading every single security measure in place because they were a diligent employee and figured, hey, if we have a problem reported about our company, I'm going to find out what it is and make sure we correct it. Spent hours trying to open and then launched a full-blown ransomware attack on the company. Um, devastating results, but that's the kind of thing that can happen. And all these security measures were actually trying to block the file from being open. And because they were so diligent, they opened it. Fake wireless bill, um, seen someone in the community fall for that one. Um, they have teenage kids, they got a giant bill, it was a fake, but just got mad and opened it. Uh, wire transfer requests, those are very common. And this is what I mean by hovering over a link. Um, if you hover over that link, you can reveal, don't click on it, but this one says um, USPS.com tracking, that looks real, tracking slip. It looks like it's giving the right, and, and the package ID even matches what's in the, um, the subject line. Um, but when you hover over it, it's something entirely different. That's a very easy trick to do, and um, that's something that somebody could fall for. Again, if you have one person in your company that doesn't know that that's even possible, they can click on this. And it's the diligent employees who want to get stuff done. Hey, we couldn't get, the, uh, we better find out what this package is. We better get it right away. Um, and here's another one where if you hover over the link, you just kind of hold your mouse over it, and then this will pop up to show what it is. This is one that's also totally different than what it says to be um, another U.S. Postal Service. A lot of UPS, U.S. Postal Service scams. Um, very easy for businesses to fall for. This is from the FedEx site. Um, they want you to fill in some documents that they attached. Again, unsolicited document. That's one to watch out for. Um, American Express, very common. It says, uh, you know, you got to complete this online verification. It's a real pain in the neck if your card stops working. So, you, again, I just want to take care of this super fast. And it's going to a totally different site. So, just if anything comes in your mail, it's just smart to call the number on your card and then just get a representative on the line and definitely don't click on anything. Um, TD Bank, again, hover over the link, you can see um, what's really going on. Again, it's, it's some problem, you need to fix it or there's gonna be some big pain. And oh, it's so easy, if you just click on this link, your problem will go away. That's how they get you. Um, and in terms of looking at the header, that's you go to the file and the properties of an email, and then you can see what's buried beneath the hood of where the email is really coming from. That's a little trickier to analyze, um, but it will show you. So, for example, um, one of the previous ones I said, this is where it was actually from. You can get that buried in there to figure out where it's coming from. This is what a wire, this is a, um, a wire transfer request. I had to take out all the details about who this is from, but this was local. Again, sent from my iPhone. Are you able to assist me today? Um, always authenticate with a phone call, face-to-face -face conversation. Um, some of them are tricky. We saw a bunch of gift card scams in the fall. Um, and typically those messages will say, like the boss is super busy, just, just get this done, don't ask me any questions. So they try to, with that social engineering, try to get you to not pick up the phone and ask, because the boss is gonna be annoyed. Um, but that's that's what they're trying to get you to do. Just a brief note on emailing confidential information. Um, it's against the law in Massachusetts to email protected information. Um, you either have to fully encrypt it or transmit it another way. I just remind people of that. Nothing protected should ever be sent in open email. A quid pro quo, some, something that's kind of like the, um, hey, your mailbox is full, but if you just click on this link, it's going to be so easy, you can get it fixed. Sometimes they're um, fake um, IT support requests. A window will pop up. Oh, there's malware on your system. You know, call Microsoft. Microsoft will never do that, um, by the way. Uh, but there's so many different variations of them. Uh, the honey trap, that's the classic, the attractive woman. Um, a lot of fake profiles on, on LinkedIn and dating sites and all that. So um, very, very common trap. Cyber attacks are time, just like um, you know, we send out a newsletter at Ikaru, you might send out some promotional information for your company. Uh, cyber criminals will time stuff as well. To um, They spike around the holidays, and they spike during certain days of the week where they're just going to get more payback. 
Um, this is a real life scenario of a LinkedIn scam of somebody is, has posted a job and uh, this candidate that looks fantastic says, hey, um, do you mind if I send you me, if, if, if I send you my resume? Um, person says, yeah, no, here's my email address. Hey, sent, like, wow, the guy did it two minutes later. This is awesome. And this was a, a launch of a full-blown ransomware attack. Everything's encrypted. And this is what the dreaded message looks like if you get a ransomware attack. Um, we really want to see like everybody get ransomware protection in place. I know it's another budget line item, but there's not much you can do after the fact. And one of the first things that the ransomware attack will do is wipe out all the logs so you won't even know how it got there without, you know, maybe with some interviews you can figure out what happened, but that's about it. Um, there's no guarantee you're going to get your funds back if you pay the encryption. You'll be down for days or weeks. Um, just read about a medical practice out. I think it was in Illinois, about a 20-person practice. They were, they've were they already been down for two weeks right now from a ransomware attack because um, it takes out everything. Um, the threat level is higher in 2019. Um, we really want folks to, you know, main, to have the same level of risk you had a year ago or two years ago. You got to increase security, and training, security awareness is a huge part of that. We really want to make sure that everybody on your team understands what the email tricks are. Um, we do recommend phishing your employees before the bad actors do. Um, this is. Some of our clients um, really love this. Um, we do it on a periodic basis. We send out the trick messages, and you can see it's an educational process, so folks can see. Um, okay, this you clicked on this link. Um, it was actually a phishing attempt. Uh, there's also weekly training tips, but again, you really want to think about everybody on your team to make sure they're being kept up to speed. Um, and just a couple more things. I know we need to wrap up. Um, Folks need to get back to work. Just keep in mind, um, people can fake caller IDs as well. So if you get a call and it says it's from the IRS, that doesn't mean it's from the IRS. On uh, you know modern phone systems, you can type in anything you want. It's illegal, but people, you know, obviously the criminals aren't worried about that. Um, FTC.gov has a lot of good information about that. Um, it's not. We, we talked today about email, but that's not the only way you can get impacted. Um, so kind of getting near the end here, I hope that um, we kind of went through a ton of different examples. And what I want folks to know is, A, this is a major threat. Again, with the opening stats, about 90% of malware is getting into organizations through email. Because your firewall is protecting, you got all these different protections in place. So the bad actors just f figure out some clever ways to get you to open the front door to let them in. Um, these kind of scams are really easy to deploy. Um, they're mostly deployed as threats of opportunity. A lot of times people don't know who's at the other end of that. Um, the big uh, ransomware that hit uh, the city of Atlanta, I think the bill for that is up to about $19 million of remediation. I don't even think it's fully 100% resolved at this point. $19 million. The people who ran that threat probably had no idea who you know, who, who clicked on that link. Um, there, this, the messages are hard to spot, but um, really encouraging everybody on your team, A, just to be aware of there's 100 different tricks and there's more every day. Think before you click. Um, we do recommend that you do phishing tests. Um, also, it is worth noting, um, we advise folks, report when you get these phishing emails, be part of the solution. Report them. Um, a different web, like Amazon, has a whole page where you can um, you can send them different phishing examples because it, it hurts their reputation too. So um, do report them when you see them. Um, other um, references that are really great are the FBI has a lot of really great information. Department of Homeland Security issues alerts all the time. These are great things. So maybe. Even just maybe taking a, a printout of some report and bringing it to a staff meeting. Mass data security law HIPAA um, require ongoing employee training. Um, we do events like this because we want to get the word out to our community. We have the more formal approaches as well. But um, education is not this extra thing you need to do. It really is vitally important because the bad actors have figured out if you have a strong business class firewall, they need another way to get in and email is how they do it. 
One just little side note, um, we want everyone in the community to be aware that Microsoft is ending support for Windows 7 in January of 2020. So at this point, you really have to have a plan in place. Also Server 2008, but um, we still see a lot of Windows 7 systems out there. You, will, you won't get security patches after that. So you'll be at security risk and also out of compliance for many different laws. Okay, so kind of to, to wrap it up, um, we showed a lot of different examples for things to look for, um, you know, do you do you do business with this organization or not? Um, what is the you know why the urgency? Just any email that comes to you with a sense of urgency, stop and ask, hey, why the urgency? Unsolicited attachments, um, misspellings, grammar mistakes, often very hard to spot, and uh, it's almost funny to look at the phishing attempts from a couple of years ago because they're so bad, and now they're so much more sophisticated. Um, the, the lack of customization, the logo can be a bit off. That one's gonna be, be very, very hard to spot, but it, it, you may note it. Um, hover over a link to see the real e, um, URL and also see who the email is really from. Sometimes it's it's more obvious because it's right up there in the, op, you know, the front page of the email header. Sometimes you have to, you'd have to dig a little further to figure that out. And then, um, you know, we want people to ask questions. You know, we're here to help. Um, we're on a mission to work with SMBs in the community, uh, get folks educated. So please reach out to us with questions. Um, we do have a, we have a Twitter feed where when we see security articles that are relevant to the community, we'll, we'll post them out there. Also on, on LinkedIn and Facebook, um, we'll post our videos up on YouTube. So please take advantage of that. And if there's any questions that you have, um, really want you to engage with us. Um, you know, call, hey, does this email look real? Um, you know, ask us. So with that, I know folks need to get back to work. Um, covered a lot of ground, um, but hopefully uh, you learned some things that you can put into action in your business to help stay protected. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.